Hey, future respiratory therapist, respiratory coach here with you. I got another video for you, another request from Farhan who wants to know how do we wean from pressure control? And now to understand this question, how do we wean from pressure control? You first have to understand how we got into pressure control. And if you haven't seen that video, then I suggest you watch it. I'm going to put a link to it. It's going to come up here across the top of your screen. Watch that video because that tells you when to know when you need to go into pressure control. And it all revolves around your plateau pressure and your peak pressure. You go into pressure control to avoid barotrauma from a decreasing lung compliance. Yeah. So if your peak inspiratory pressure start climbing into the 30s, the 40s, obviously the 50s, then you're going to start thinking about pressure control because you have a crappy static lung yeah. compliance. Now, if your plateau pressures start climbing above 30, then you're looking at the same thing. My alveolar compliance is crap. I don't want to overextend these alveoli. I don't want to cause barotrauma. I don't want to cause long-lasting damage to the lungs from this short-term mechanical ventilation state. So I'm going to preserve this by going into pressure control. I can achieve an adequate tidal volume by giving a lower pressure over a longer period of time, which is set through your eye time, which will meet my tidal volume requirements and meet ultimately my minute ventilation demands, which will allow me to better oxygenate my patients and ventilate my patients in the decreasing lung compliance patients, specifically static compliance. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to understand is like where and why do we go into pressure control? Now, once you understand that, then you understand when to come out of pressure control. When do I go, okay, we've been in pressure control for two days. Where are we? Is it time to go out of pressure control and back into volume control? Do I even need to come out of pressure control? What do I need to do? And here's the answer, Farhan. If your compliance is getting better and your patient is in pressure control, then you're going to see tidal volumes increasing. If your static compliance is getting better, then you're going to see your tidal volumes getting larger when you're ventilating in pressure control. So, what do we know we want our tidal volumes to be? We know we're shooting during mechanical ventilation for 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. So, when you're in pressure control and your tidal volumes are coming back 10 to 12 mLs per kilo, if that, maybe 9, maybe 11, it doesn't always have to be an even number, just FYI. But they're coming back greater than 6 to 8 mLs per kilo then that tells you your patient's lung compliance is getting better. So can you decrease the pressure control? Yes. Turn the peak inspiratory pressure down. That will decrease your tidal volumes. That will bring your minute ventilation down to a level that it needs to be at. And you ventilate your patient here. Now when you get to minimal settings, like let's say you have a peak inspiratory pressure set of 20 and you're getting 8 mLs per kilo, right. and that's probably an indication that you no longer need to be in pressure control because you could right. probably put that patient back in volume control and their dynamic and their com static compliance would probably be pretty good. So the answer to your question is, is just watch your return tidal volumes. If your return, volume, return tidal volumes continue to remain low, then lung compliance is not improving. But at the point in time when lung compliance starts to improve, your tidal volumes are going to go up. Your minute ventilation will subsequently go up. That's indicative to you that you need to either one, decrease your peak inspiratory pressure, or two, you need to go out of pressure control ventilation and back in to volume control ventilation. Or maybe you go into pressure support. It just depends on what the patient presents. 
If the patient's triggering breaths, you can go from pressure control to pressure support. If the disease process has reversed and now they're on the mend. If they're still super sick, then the lungs are still going to be non-compliant. Your volumes and pressure control are still going to be small. Worse than 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. So maybe they're 4 mLs per kilo. Well, you're not going to try to take somebody in pressure control who is, who's returning 4 mLs per kilo to volume control set at 6 mLs per kilo. It's not going to work, right? So you got to understand your patient's ideal body weight. you got to understand the volumes that are coming back from pressure control and how would they relate to volume control. If you switch them back to volume control and their peak pressures are still high, put them back in pressure control. If they're triggering all the breaths in pressure control, switch them, try them in pressure support. CPAP with pressure support. See how they do with that. This, there's not, there's not a boundary of rules. There's concepts. That's what it comes down to, is that these concepts of mechanical ventilation, which is what makes it an art, art isn't bounded by boundaries that say you must operate inside of these rules, right? Art says, here's your canvas, paint me something. That's what mechanical ventilation is. So with pressure control, You just have to simply look at your return volumes. Where do they fall on the spectrum? Are they large volumes, greater than 6 to 8 mLs per kilo? Then maybe I should think about switching. If they're super small volumes, then they're probably not ready to switch. And when you switch, what do you switch to? Do I go to volume control? Maybe for 50% of your patients you do. But maybe for the other 50%, you can go straight from pressure control to CPAP with pressure support, assuming the pressure support presents and, and, and provides adequate support to maintain an adequate tidal volume. And then you extubate them 12 to 24 hours later. It can go either way. Maybe you go to volume control and they stay there for two days, and then you extubate them. There's no... There's no guidelines here. Just know what your target tidal volumes are for compliant lungs. Our goal is 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. If you can achieve that with volume control, fantastic. If you achieve that with pressure control, fantastic. When the process that reverse, when the process reverses that caused the patient to go on the mechanical ventilator in the first place reverses, then put them in CPAP, pressure support, and get them off the ventilator as soon as possible. That's the message, and that's the guidelines. Hey, man, I hope this helps. If you haven't posted a comment with a question, because I know you probably have one, please do so now. If you haven't and you want to, then know you're welcome to. Okay. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I don't, I don't really care about the subscription numbers, but I want you that if you're interested in getting free information, free videos that will help you be a respiratory th- better respiratory therapist in the future, hit the subscribe button. The worst case scenario is that you can unsubscribe tomorrow. Okay. Hope everybody's having a great day. Best wishes.